Welcome back to the Ultimate Mixdown. In this video, I wanted to introduce you to a gem of a synth that I found many years ago that I think would be a great addition to your collection. It's definitely an older soft synth. It hasn't been updated in many years, but I've still found a way to make it work with the new Apple silicon chips. So if you have a new machine or you have a new operating system, there's still a way to make this synth work and there are so many patches for it. If you go to KVR Audio, which I'll share in the description below, it's going to be really tough for you to load this thing and not find a sound that you're happy with. So let's jump right into the video. We're talking about Daichi Laboratories Synth 1. Now the first thing is I'm going to show you how to do a fresh install, especially if you're using, again, an Apple silicon chip like the M1 or the M2 or any of the Pro versions. Now in the past you would go to your browser and you'd go to KVR Audio. And for those of you that don't know KVR Audio, this is an excellent resource for plugins. Plugins, samples, banks, patches. Basically you can go to the products and if you just create a login you can go to products and you can find all of the software that's available. And there's even a way for you to search for the free audio software, which if you have just a little bit of creative ability, you can take free stuff and make it sound exceptionally good in your songs. So I highly recommend trying out all the good free stuff that are highly rated on this site before you even get interested in paying for plugins. So best free plugins, right? And look at Synth1 is number one on KVR Audio's best free plugins. So let's click on it. Okay, and the old way that you would install it is by clicking the download link for Windows next to Windows or for Mac next to the Mac version. This is going to bring you to an old archive site, not maintained as well. There is an updated page. Again, put the link in the description below. And this is the page that we have here, translated to English. This gives you all of the information you need. You have what is the synth one. It gives you all of the, the number of oscillators. It gives you how many notes polyphonic. It gives you all of this information. It tells you which operating environments it works for. In this case, I'm going to be using Mac. If you're a Windows user, follow the information for the Windows environments. So you just scroll down to download. This is where you're going to download it for any type of Mac, whether it's silicon or Intel chips. And then they even give you a few patch presets too. But as I mentioned before, you can go back to KVR Audio and just take a look real quick before we download this. If you go to Downloads, you'll see all these banks, patches, and presets. All of these things are free. Now you have to be careful. You want to make sure that they're rated well. You want to make sure that they've been tried and tested. As with any software that you download from the internet, do your due diligence on what you're looking for, on what you're downloading, and what you're trying to install on your machine. All right, you can see certain things are downloaded X number of times. They have a certain rating. These things will help you make sure that you're not downloading something that's just plain trash or something that could be malicious. Okay, but just look at all of these patches and I have so many of these already installed on my machine. So let's get back to the download. Click your download link of choice for your operating system. Okay and once the download is complete you can click here and you can click on the zip folder that was created. In this case I'll just go to my downloads folder and show you what's there. If you double click it's going to open the zip file and all you get for Mac users anyway is a component file. It might be a VST for those that use Windows, but in the component file, you need to bring this to your plugins components folder on a Mac. And this is the same again for Intel or silicon chips. Windows, you would put that VST in, in whatever library VST that you have on a Windows machine. So to do this, let's bring up a new window and we'll go to our Macintosh, basically a hard drive library audio plugins. Okay, so that was quick. So let me do that again and I'm going to do it in column view. So we're on a hard drive, Macintosh HD, Library, Audio, Plugins. Okay, and here is where you're going to put the plugin. For Max, it's going to be Components. Let's go into Components. Okay, I already have it here, but you would just drag it from the downloads into the Components folder, and voila, you have it installed. But it's not that easy. So the first thing you're going to hit with when you open Reaper or whatever DAW that you're working in is the developer cannot be verified for this plugin. Okay, it won't open it on your machine. I've already gotten past this. I can't really show you that error, but you will know what I'm talking about as soon as you try to do this. So one way you can do this is you can go to that plugin component. So you go to your hard drive library, audio, plugins, components, find that component, and then open with 
And then there's a few applications that you can open this with. What happens is when you do try to open it in another application, like in utilities terminal, for example, it's going to open it in the terminal. It's not going to do much because this isn't designed in this way to be run in the terminal. But when you do do that for the first time, the Mac is going to see that you've accepted the developer of this plugin as somebody that's trustworthy to the machine. Now don't go around doing this for everything. Definitely do your due diligence. Make sure that you've got the right developer, you've got the right plugin. You don't wanna just give access for all of these things just like that. But in this case, we know that we want this plugin to work. We'll open it up in the terminal, Mac will accept it. And then now we can open Reaper and load that plugin onto a track. So let's go into Reaper. Okay, we'll just do a new session, ignore our default template. We don't need that right now. Double click to create a new track or you could always right click and do virtual instrument on a new track. I'm gonna just type synth one so we know what we're talking about. In the inserts, synth one, and you should see this in the insert. If you don't, you might need to go to Reaper, settings, scroll down to plugins, VST, rescan, rescan VST paths for new modified plugins, okay? And that pop-up box means that it might've found something and added it to your plugin library based off of what's in all of the plugin folders on your machine, such as the one where we put that synth one component in earlier. All right, and one thing to be sure is in your path list that you do have that plugin folder in Reaper. If it's not in here, you can click edit path list and add the path to that folder. So in this case, this would be that Mac hard drive, audio, plugins, components. That's where your synth one component is. All right, and then we'll click OK. Now you should be able to go to insert. You can type in synth one, and then you should see AU on a Mac or VST on a Windows, synth one, DIG laboratory, and click add. This will add this virtual instrument onto the track. Now you have it here loaded, but you have no sounds, especially on a Mac. You won't even have the initial sound bank on a Mac. One thing you need to do is start downloading sound banks. So again, going back to where we got the software, where we got the download, there are a few initial sound banks, the Synth1 factory preset. This will load the original factory preset with 128 different tones. And then there's a few additional patch files and banks that you can download and also bring into the system so that you can play around with. For sure, definitely go back to KVR Audio under Synth1 and check out all these banks here. I've downloaded a bunch of them. A bunch of them sound great, some of them not so much. You're gonna have to try it out, test it out, and see what you like best. But what happens is you can't just automatically load it off the bat. So what you need to do is go to your Mac HD, users, your username, documents, and then synth one patches. And then in here, there's a sound bank 00 and a zip bank folder. The zip bank folder is where we wanna focus. This is where you put your sound banks. So if we go to either any of these sound banks on this KVR page, or we wanna get the factory preset, click that, here's your download. It gives you a factory preset zip. Let's go to the downloads, open that up, and then we can go to our zip bank folder. And let me show you again as columns. Okay, we can see that. Mac HD, users, username, documents, or you know, obviously if you're already logged in as your user, you just go to your documents, synth one patches, zip bank folder. Now you can drag that factory preset zip right into this folder. They can stay as zip files, they can stay as RAR files, and basically that's just a compressed version of a collection of sounds. So you don't need to unzip them, you don't need to unpack the RAR files, keep them as they are, and Synth1 will actually know how to process that in the system, in your DAW, and pull up the sounds accordingly. I already have the factory preset zip here, okay? So it's already in the zip bank, so if you're doing this for the first time, your zip bank folder might only have this factory preset zip. That's fine, you can always play with these other ones later. Let's go back to Reaper. Again, opening this up. Once you place it in the zip bank folder, you can click right here. You can go to external, and then you can go and find whatever zip or RAR files that you've placed in that folder that have the sounds that you're looking for. So let's find that factory preset zip. Okay, so I click the factory preset zip, and then here's the bank. Here's the 128 tones that we were told on the website that we could select between. And then you can click on any one of these and you can start playing. One other thing that you want to do is if you're using an audio MIDI device, you want to make sure that you have in your settings the MIDI device. Okay, so you go under audio MIDI devices and you want to make sure that they exist here. So if you have it plugged in, either your external keyboard plugged in directly via USB to your computer, or you have your keyboard plugged into your audio interface through MIDI cables, and then you have it turned on and you have it plugged in, you should be able to see it here. If you don't see it here, click reset all MIDI devices and this should eventually pull it up. And here I have a Korg R3, so what I'm using here, and you can right click 
and you can enable or disable certain things by just clicking here. Same thing for the output, so input up top, output out bottom. This is automatically selected and enabled for me if I already have the device turned on, or if I click this button, I'll click OK. And then going down here, so now you can do record input audio or MIDI, just make sure that that's there. And then you can click your input, go down to input MIDI, and then you can select whatever MIDI device you're using and all channels. Now that we have the Synth1 plugin in the effects, we have the patch loaded, the factory preset patch that we selected, and we've selected our MIDI device. Now we just need to record arm the track if it's not already, and it's either this R button or a red button, and then you can just play, and you should be able to hear it. And then to switch between the patches in any zip folder, you just click again and just pick a different patch. We have a slap bass. Let me just bring that down a few octaves. You can go through all these patches. You got a flute, so let's go back up a few octaves. And this is just the factory preset zip. So let me click on this again. All of these other zip and RAR folders I've gotten from KVR Audio. These are all different developers or users coming up with their own patches and banks that you can use. So we can just do like this filter 303 sound bank. I'm just going to pull off and I'll just pick this pad. And these are just the presets. On top of that, you have, like I mentioned before, you have the two oscillators, you have an LFO, you have arpeggiator, you can change your voices. Its default is 16, but you can go up to 32 different polyphonic voices. You have tempo delays, you have choruses, you have an EQ so that you can EQ different frequencies, different ADSR filters, attack, decay, sustain, release, for those who are unfamiliar. But you have all of this flexibility, so you can take any one of these patches. So you go again into here. You've gotten all these different sound banks. They already sound good off the bat, at least the ones that you've identified from the patches that you've downloaded or the banks that you've downloaded. It sounds great, but then you want to add just a little bit extra, craft it to your own sound. Whatever you're looking for for your song, you can just go in and start dialing in these effects. And there's plenty of tutorials online that can teach you how to do this stuff in different synths. I know it looks intimidating, Honestly, I don't even mind just bringing in the presets and then I'll throw in some delays, choruses, or other effects. I'll put on EQs if I need to, whatever it is to make the sound my own. It doesn't have to be in the synth one UI either. You can put on Rhea Delay. You could put on Rhea EQ, All right? So you can start using Reaper plugins to affect the sound that's coming out of this plugin. A lot of the stuff that I've just been talking about with this synth, you can do with any software synth. All right, all these software synths, they have their own parameters that you can adjust to change the sound. They have their own patches, their own banks, their own presets, all these things. And that might just be enough. It might be enough to just use the preset or the patch of the bank that you've loaded. Try them all out. Find the stuff that you like and build songs around it. One warning I want to say about this, aside from doing your due diligence on the banks and patches, this is an old piece of software. This beta is from back in 2021. It was not designed for the Mac silicon chips. This is just a way to make it work on any given Mac. And so far I see it working on my M1 Pro. You do need to be careful, right? Make sure you save your projects often. Certain patches might not work. And again, because it's being an old piece of software and it hasn't been updated in recent years, this may not last forever. So whatever projects you're building with this stuff, it's definitely worth bouncing down your songs, bouncing down the sound or whatever synths you play, whether it's a melody or chords or anything like that. Definitely a good idea to store that as an audio file. This is not future proof, especially if the developer is inactive or isn't coming out with updates regularly. But I just wanted to show everyone this synth. In the future, I'll be doing more videos like this. If you like this video, let me know. Hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this. I love talking about free plugins because honestly, I've made so much music with free plugins. You definitely need to try this stuff out, especially if you're just starting out to get new sounds, new tones, new creative ideas. Thanks again for joining the Ultimate Mixdown. I can't wait to see you in the next video.